we might be saved. Wait for the alien to return from the fortress. Guys, I have a problem. You know that cool blue beanie that I always wear? Because I like to wear cool hats for 60 seconds and I'm trying for 60 parsecs. Um, I can't find it, but whatever. I guess I'll just wear this blue flannel, but it kind of defeats the purpose of what I'm trying to do here today. Yes, today we're back with 60 parsecs. The reason I am wearing this gorgeous pink is that if you don't know, this last week it was International Women's Day. And we love women here on this channel. So I have decided to go where no male feminist has gone before. That's right, I'm going to have an all-female space crew. Which actually I do think did happen. Or is going to happen. That's right, Lauren Sanchez says her all-female space crew will be announced soon. My fellow astronauts. And this is a report from People Magazine. You know, exactly where I'm getting my science, my science information from. But they are working on an all-female space crew. That is so awesome. But I'm going to do it before them. <laughs> Uh, and we are going to have an all-female space crew. So, let's play. You guys really let me just do my entire intro with my arms up. All right, we're locked in now. New adventure. Survival. And we will go ahead. We'll start. We've been starting a lot uh, with Dee Dee, but I think we're going to do it with May today. Or Megan. How embarrassing. That was not what we did. Um, we do Voyager. The dumb. Alright, so we're trying to grab Megan, April, and Dee Dee. It would be Megan, though. So we're only looking for April and Dee Dee. I will be thoroughly unplussed if, in fact, this happens to be the first crew that actually survives. Find where everybody is first. Wow, useless. Um, totally useless. Oh, there's a spaceship book, though. Cosmo book. Excuse me! Hey, hey. Where are my girls at? Where are my girls at? Right, well, we already gotta throw that in there. Where are my girls at? Come on. Girls just wanna have fun. All right, grab whatever's up here. Um, there we go. Ah, oh, yes, I got my girls. I got my girls. Ah, oh, this is perfect. We're gonna go ahead. I'll actually grab those like right at the tail end if I can. Oh, come on, just need one more suit. All right. Oh, we might be running out of time. We might be running out of time. We might be running out of time here. Oh no. Oh no, I can't. I can't. I need to grab the communicator. No! I need to get in there. Okay. Ooh. I got a soup odyssey. I collected 111 cans of soup in as many playthroughs as I've done of this. So congratulations, me. I'm actually really happy with that. We got um materials we got chemicals we got the communicator we got the idol we got all of our women guys i think we're gonna survive <laughs> all right okay let's oh we did not get enough soup for everybody that might have been a, an issue we do have the artifact we have a space suit we have our, our handbook i don't see where all of our materials went but i know that we have some Captain, all Astro Citizen missions begin with a commanding officer out oh, to give a speech. We'll do the intelligence one. I should have started crafting soup. I'm a dumb. Day two. You knew exactly what to say. Your convincing speech was more than enough to prove your worth as captain of the last human crew in the universe. That was quite a performance, Captain. Your crew started cheering. Long live the captain! Attention, Captain. I'm detecting a leak in your uh, reactor coolant system. In case you were wondering, this is not good. Oh, uh, we didn't get the mask. Did I mention you should not inhale anything? Uh, okay. Well, we can't do anything about it, so. Ooh, everybody's sick, everybody's sick, everybody is sick. Humor goes so much better as a group of humans is faced with the possibility of radioactive death. 
Well, the chaos and cries for help. I can't even tell which one of you managed to fix the leak in the end. Too bad you inhaled quite a bit of coolant in the process. Okay, well, that's great. Why don't we go ahead and craft a med kit? Does it say how much? Okay. We could, in theory, craft enough med kits for everybody, except the fact that it takes three days. Okay, well, that's fine. I guess everyone's just, it's fine. They look fine. Look, she only has a little bit of the pox. She mostly looks like she just really has to use the bathroom. And April over here just got a little bit of the sniffles. It's fine. That was definitely Dee Dee and I said April. Captain, there's something you need to see. The scanners are picking up a container floating in the vicinity. I wonder what's inside. Should we try to pull the container aboard? Yes. Yes, we should. Yes, we should because we're kind of running out of things already very quickly. Craft, craft another freaking soup. And we'll go ahead and keep our captain fine, healthy. Day seven, a week in space, a whole week in space. The mysterious cargo the scanner spotted yesterday is now on board, opening the box in three, two, one. Oh, it's a battery, or at least something that seems to work like a battery. Don't you wonder what the story is there, Captain? One thing's for sure, we're not alone out here. Beauty still sick, crafting completed. We now have three soup. I've recovered from my illness, but we're all starving. April over here, we're looking a little worse for wear. Meanwhile, Dee Dee's just like, this is the best cleanse I've been on. Your attention is required, Captain. This is most abnormal. We are registering unknown transmission, but I cannot identify who's sending them. And more importantly, what the, what they contain. It might be a solar flare interference or worse, a new type of Soviet encryption. We need to decipher these signals as soon as possible. For all we know, our survival depends on it. Who do you want to put in charge of monitoring these communications? Who is the smartest? Okay, it would appear that uh, May is the smartest. So we'll go ahead and have May do it. Megan, I keep calling her May. I've been obsessed with May Martin lately. I think that's why. All right, so we have made contact with somebody and we need to investigate the soul. All right, we're being asked if we want to do this program called Everything is Not Your Peaches and Cream because we're apparently a little hungry. So sure. I guess. I think that's ironic. I choose a uh, crew made entirely of women. And uh, one of the first things that the computer does is like, hey, would you like me to tell you about food intake? Oh my God, are you kidding me? I'm sick again. Your culinary urges have been kept under control. We spent the afternoon talking about things other than food, then circled back to agree on the many merits of tomato soup. <gasps> oh God, and I just, I just realized Dee Dee's gone. <laughs> Oh no. All right, and the handbook, it was the cosmic flu. Right, and we should have a landing potential site in uh, one day, which is perfect because yeah, we just, we, we gotta get, we gotta get fed. And honestly, as long as April is okay, like we, we should be pretty good. We literally just need to land and have April still be fine because then she can go out and like explore or we can too. We just, we can't go out anywhere if it's just us and then we're literally just kind of waiting to die. <laughs> Ma'am, something huge is dropped on the scanners. A dark swirling sky planet is dead ahead. Covered in a giant storm, but beneath the dark swirls, my scanner detect hazy, indistinct heat signatures and a multitude of structures. A thunderous world is probably an improvement over the mind-boggling empty vacuum. Yep, let's go ahead and land. Oh, this is not Mootopia. Day 14, so we've been up here for two weeks. A bonus. Mission failed, investigate source of mysterious transmission, that's fine. Goal achieved, find an appropriate landing spot. Goal update. We need to await further instructions and fix the system's communicator. Right. So we're gonna go ahead, craft that, craft a med kit in three days. That's great. That's great. Love that. Love that for us. Thankfully, we're only hungry, so we do have a few days left. Day 15. Dang it! Hello, world. Yeah, April is gone. So now I don't know what we're gonna do. Captain, your dopamine levels are dangerously low. You want a joke? 
What did the computer? Why did the computer arrive late to work? Because it had a hard drive. Ha ha! Are you laughing? Um. How about an episode of the hit show Three Guys and a Horse instead? It's indeed an, an enchanted interrogation method if we ever capture any reds. But you might find it amusing. Sure, because we're insane. Also, I realized that we don't have any food. She's starving. For better or for worse, it's just three guys and a horse. This show never gets old, Captain. Just watch the episode where the horse gets a job at the glue factory. I want to learn he's not working the machines. Odd. There's a floating pan galactic fun fair outside. Two games look permit look pertinent. A zero G loop wire game and a space time bending maze. Um, well our intelligence is not seeming great at the moment. Because you know, insane. But I think we could probably probably use our agility. There's no way that we're not starving. Looks like we uh, won the zero G chamber and we got we got a sock puppet, which we desperately need. You say you woke up today. There was something different about the shuttle. Was somebody inside when you were asleep? I saw nothing, Captain. Maybe you shouldn't have put me on sleep mode last night because my screens were too bright. Someone ate from your soup can, you say. You suspect the visitor might still be on board? So a thorough search of the shuttle is in order. Okay, hopefully we found someone that can help us. We found nothing except a hidden pool of soup behind a bulkhead. Alright, so someone outside was apparently playing a giant version of tic-tac-toe. We are going to take them. We're going to take the pieces for ourselves. To use for material. Alright, and we'll go ahead and give Miss May some soup. So at least she's going to be okay now. Captain, our communicator equipment is detecting something. I don't think it's transmission. I think it's a whale? Sure, let's see what's, what's going on. Not that we can do a whole heck of a lot, but... No, why not? Day 21. Consider taking the alien in. Oh! Well obtained. Check goal section. Goal achieved. Await contact. Went outside to investigate the eerie crying sound on the stormy uh, uh, dystopian plains. Came back with a stumbling little alien. Oh my goodness, look at it, it's so cute. Seems weak, possibly injured, and as lonely as an emergency escape pod flying through the cosmos. We brought it in and propped it up in the corner. I can't say if it was your engineering skills or dumb luck, but you were able to craft a high quality item. Score. Oh, okay, that's just telling. Help the alien recover. Sure, we can do that. Captain, I found an Astro Citizen ID for someone named John Jeffrey Adams Washington. John Jefferson Adams Washington. Uh, there's no one by that name listed in our database. Could uh, there be someone living among us? How suspicious. Your only lead is that the ID was found next to a uh, older shut vent. How will you solve the mystery? Our intelligence, because we are brilliant now. All that reading that we do. Yeah, huh. Everything keeps kind of changing as we... Uh, Spend more time and do more things. So yeah, we're brilliant now. Out the shuttle port window, and all you saw looking back was your reflection. Could it be, Captain? Could you be the imposter? Of course not. That makes no sense at all. Oh my goodness, I just got that. There's an imposter on board traveling through the vents. A sweet old man looking like Charles Darwin is knocking at your airlock lately. You let him in and he shakes your hand. He holds out an iron grip and won't let go. With technology, evolution stops. Soviet scientists want your species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. He claims it's for your own good. Oh god! You've let me in despite the warning signs. Now face your space predator, human. Um, okay, well we have some armor. That's a good defense. Day 23. Oh, okay, we're pretty good. The armor predator droid helped you in it held you in its grip. You thrust yourself back and with one swift motion slipped the armor on. It pulled a gun and shot that your armor held. You braced yourself, but what the droid did was far worse than anything you could have imagined. Charles Darwin burst into tears. I was so afraid I would have I would have to kill you. It said you shared the sentiment. But you're excellent at defending yourself, thus worthy to survive. I'm so glad. I hugged you tightly like a little friendly boa and left. Great, then can you like help us, maybe? The little alien we collected from the planet's ruined plains appears to be very, very unwell. 
You can treat the lost alien in a few ways. How would you like to help it? Well, we're not using our med kit, so go ahead and do that. Oh, he's better. After studying the little weak alien, we found it outside. You decided to treat its nastier wounds. Uh, you pulled down your first aid kit from the wall before extracting some utensils for advantages. Then you got to work. The creature's wounded leg is now tightly wrapped up, cleaned, and sanitized. You can see its beady eyes looking through its goggles, beaming at you in, grat in gratitude. And we still even have our first aid kit, so there you go. Interesting news, Captain. It appears that there is a hollow space behind one of the wall panels. A hidden room, maybe a secret stash? Should we check it out? Yes, but let's be quick about it. Yikes. Okay. The extraterrestrial contamination was no match for the astrocyst issued mass. Quarantine protocol have been executed for your earliest commute. Um, okay, so are we not sick? Oh no, we're just starving. <laughs> A troop of aliens with clipboards are dashing to our door. They're all heavily mutated with wonky limbs. And some extra limbs. And no limbs at all. Fifteen of the little gas masked aliens are stuck in our airlock and are scribbling on scaly paper. If you have a weapon, you could wave it at them to make a warning attack. Alternative is to leave them to it. They seem to only be making records. I mean, we don't have anything to fend, our, fend them off, so... Oh, are you kidding me? So they broke our... Everything. They broke everything. Alright, there's a big fruit growing outside. Let's see if we can eat it. Unlikely, because all we can really eat in this game is tomato soup. But let's see. It didn't make us sick. Oh, the other half was full of purple wriggling worms. All right. Oh, hey, it actually did that. It made our strength go up. Cool. I'm probably from the protein from the worms, to be honest. I had nothing to do with it being like an alien thing. All right. Uh, we were trying to make a map when we got the message, you're trespassing on my domain. Pay tribute or die. Regards, the Watchman. Go ahead and give us some soup. We can make more, it's fine. She's not quite starving yet. All right, so he took the can of soup and said, I'll spare my energy, let them kill you. Cool. Alien vessels approaching. Their ship is rigged with a light show synced to music. Okay, they're playing rockabilly. Aliens claim to be the Dancing Lord tri Tribe. And they want us to uh, try and defeat them. Sure, let, let's see if our agility is enough to defeat the Dancing Lord tribe. Eh, we did not. They let us be, but said we had better have sweet dance moves next time. Okay, so we found a hill nearby that has a chasm with a safe inside it. We're going to try to walk the tightrope to it, because we are definitely not strong enough to... Uh, uh, to pull it to us. And that did not work. Okay. After we collected the little Obian uh, uh, from the plane, I thought it would be best to perform first aid on the sick, ali sick alien's leg. Now it's relaxed a bit. You can treat it in a couple of ways. Let's go ahead and put some tape on it. If we can help it. Also, there's a new... I upgraded the Cosmos book, so it's Cosmos 102. Do not trust people, they are capable of greatness, but you can almost always trust your assigned astro unit. Oh, the alien, the alien left. Old Chief, help the alien recover. After a couple more hours rest, the little alien in the shuttle seemed cognizant, he seemed cogent, and is breathing more easily. And it just spoke in broken English. These phobians must be sharp as stalagmites if they can pick up a language so quickly. The lonely phobian explains that it is an that it it is an exile cast out from its home at silo 1799 it believes the world outside was safe after it found records of paradise zone to the west untouched by war or fallout but saying such things is taboo in their races agoraphobic post-war culture the exile says it will travel the exile says it will travel to the haven and see if we are welcome then come back for us we might be saved! Wait for the alien to return from the fortress. A Phoebean vehicle is, is puttering towards us over the plains. 
It pulls up next to us, and the alien inside almost falls out. Another fragile phobian. Uh, what is it with these guys? The little alien explains that it was... The little alien explains it was held captive by an evil tribe of phobian bandits and tortured... Oh, by a little one in particular, one with a part partially broken snout and nest. And nasty limp, the phobian. We helped the little liar. However, this survivor says it came from a real resource-rich walled ha haven and asked for some minerals to repair its vehicle. That way, we can all escape to safety. He needs 10 pounds of various minerals. Hand them over? We have 10 pounds of minerals? Nope. Sorry. I don't know if I believe him. Oh, wait for the alien to return. Gather materials to repair the aliens. You refuse to hand over any materials of the Phobian driver. You know the one who was held prisoner? You know by the creature that brutally betrayed us? He cracked his head in confusion, but shrugged, assuming uh, there must be a reason for it. We'll return, it muttered, and put it off in its jeep. Okay. So I take it we have to help him then? He came across one of the planet's apparent inhabitants, the alien carrying a heavy-looking case. Entering nearby bunker looking structure, and you followed. He left his armor like suit and the case on a rack with a multitude of other suits and cases. The alien is apparently taking a shower. Act fast. We snatch one of the suits and run or force a random case open. Match and grab. Day 49. The bunker visit went poorly. Oh. Depending on how you cut it, the lesson here is don't steal from random strangers, or if you do steal from random strangers, be better at it. Day 50. Oh my god, we made it 50 days. I'm detecting high levels of unknown toxin in the air system. Now it shows it isn't too dangerous, but it has hallucinogenic properties, so you shouldn't be breathing it for too long. The air filtrationists get jostles around during the crash, and a crack may have opened. How, what will you use to seal the crack? The artifact, maybe? Oh my goodness! Use the artifact to seal the crack. Um, you took the spiritual approach. Breathing in as much of the toxin as you could before stroking at the artifact until it started talking. I am Gorba, Solenta, the artifact said. Take some of the sacred dust from my base and add a little spit. You did, and it sealed the crack. Okay! I'm confused by the space communist right here. What you doing, buddy? What you doing? Captain, there's a couple of spacemen having a roadside picnic outside. Wait a minute, they're wearing Soviet spacesuits. And they're singing Kalinka? What are, the so what are the Soviets doing here? Are they uh, the mysterious group that's been watching us? Oh no, it was a distraction. They're trying to break through into the shuttle. Oh my goodness, what do we do, what do we do? One of them boarded the shuttle. Stand your ground, Captain. With what? My atomic battery? Or my artifact? I don't know what these are gonna do. I know if we had the gun, like obviously we could, you know, kind of chew them away. But the artifact, I don't know if they're going to be like, oh god, this isn't an American, they're freaking cultist or something. Or I don't know if using the atomic battery, like, the ship will jump into action. Day 52. No space communist. Astro citizens, legs up. Now, Captain, try the- oh. Uh, sending a gigawatt of power through the hull. The intruders were electrocuted and escaped. You better run, you commies. Okay. Good for us! Day 53, there's an Astro Citizen cargo crate lying nearby. Unfortunately, it's empty. Oh, the lab there's a signal uh, syringe in a small... There's a single syringe in a small box. The label is blurry thanks to the cheap Astro Citizen ink. The Soviets got one thing right in using pencils. Do you want to use the mysterious syringe on yourself? Why not? Feeling any better? You were down for the count after you inject the syringe found in the abandoned cargo crate. Oh, okay, playing intravenous roulette with the needle rustled in a cargo load of out-of-date serum in your system. This will result in permanent damage to your base, physical, and mental abilities. A strange new world. The Soviets, they're back! Oh god. They're all over the shuttle. We can't allow communism to get a foothold here in the Astro Citizen vessel. Prepare for a fight? Let's use... I'm curious what... The, the artifact is going to do for us. There are few things quite as scary as a true believer with an artifact in her hands. The attackers clearly shared the fear. They retreated in a hurry. Hear the fluctuation of an old, broken car engine, ma'am. It's the survivor again. The one who was tortured by the little old alien friend? 
We declined to take... Okay, let's give him some material now. Why not? We're literally just looking for any way off... Any way, like, into a safe place now. You agreed to hand over some materials to the Phobian driver, uh, but when you went to grab them, there was nothing there. The Phobian driver rubbed his temples in irritation when uh, you splayed your hands apologetically. Next time, have you, Will? Well, all right, then I guess we need to recycle something. And I take it this extra little communicator down here really hasn't given us anything, so, or isn't doing anything for us, because we have this communicator console too. Oh god, I didn't even realize freaking the Soviets are back. Um, we can't allow communism to get a foothold here in the Astros and Vessel prepare to fight. Let's use our intelligence. Any conflict can be resolved with cold, calculated logic, you decided. Pulling the reactor emergency venting release was the only logical thing to do. Logically, the attacker was subatomized in a gross kind of way. Good thinking, Captain. You better run, you commies. You were able to defend yourself this time. Oh, okay. Oh, great. The space commies are back. Go ahead and use the artifact. Okay, so there's little, little phobians that look like they're trying to make their trek towards the haven. And they're looking a little worse for wear. We're going to try and give them a little bit of help. A little bit of medical attention. Oh, and it just gives a little bit more background on the fact that, like, this specific... This specific family was like building silos and everything happened. All right, the little Phoebean is back and we will hand over the 10 min minerals now. Well achieved, gather materials to repair the alien's Jeep. Uh, you handed over a little collection of minerals at the alien driver. He needed bare aluminum, silicon, flint, and mica. Parts for a new spark plug and alternator, I'd say, ma'am. The survivor needs to get back to his workshop he'll make the repairs then he'll come back for us to take us to the haven oh my goodness so we could have already been done by now i think await your lift to the haven land so we literally just need to survive now until the alien comes back for us okay okay this is good the soviets they're back again artifact time oh god what happened to us has she been like this and i just didn't notice you've been worried you've been worried about something captain but it seems these troubles are behind you I'm not surprised by your choice to find comfort with the Astro Citizen issued uh, Astro Pact. It is uh, guaranteed to resolve any and all of your emotional issues. I can't tell if it was the mumbling to or juggling of the artifact that helped, but I'm glad to see you're doing better now. Oh, the little thing's back. In the distance, Fobian is flying towards us on a high-powered vehicle. I believe it's the one who wanted us to who wanted to take us to the Haven, ma'am. Wait, something is in tow. It appears to be a huge dust cloud. No, it's a barbarian cavalcade. Helmed up by the little freak we helped out days ago. The Phoebean came from the Haven, pulls out. Haven, you can come. The Phoebean from the Haven pulls out. Haven, you can come, but help with them. It screams frantically, pointing at the neon-drenched convoy, plowing towards us. We can try to find a good hiding spot, fight the impending troop head-on, or hop on the vehicle and run. At this point, I'm not sure which option is best. Let's find a good hiding spot, I think. This could be the end. Day 80. Flawless management. Reach an ending as Megan. The end. Oh, did we get saved? A friendly Phoebean was rapidly approaching when the Legion of Horrible in tow. Uh, you quickly remembered that among the planet's many pillbox-like bunkers, several were nearby. At least one was probably a good hiding place. Oh my goodness, that's right. We, uh, like, mapped bunkers. That was a really smart choice, then. <laughs> Grab the Phoebean and picked a hiding place. But your memory served you poorly. You picked a one-room bunker and froze like a freakish deer in headlights as the barbarians flooded in. Weapons raised with lunatic screams. You never emerged from the little pillbox. I'm sorry you met such a violent end, Captain Man. I was so excited that I made it to the Haven, and I did not. I died in a tiny bunker. I mean, I kept the crew alive for 30 days. Are you kidding? I made it 80 days. And we were going to leave to the Haven. Oh, God, no! Are you kidding me? And so Captain Megan Mann bravely faced the horde of cannibalistic Phobian directly. But pitting one human and her Phobian friend against a horde of bloodthirsties never yielded good odds. 
Now Megan is lying in a heap somewhere while the barbarians pull apart her shuttle's hull for scrap metal. Captain Man has some magnificent adventures. Captain Man had some magnificent adventures. This is... You know what? I'm sad. Disappointed. But such a heck of an adventure. Um, go, go, Megan Man. Well, at least on... Uh, what was this place called? The Phoebean Planet? I at least kind of have an idea now of how to actually escape. And this is the first time that, like, I almost got to a real ending. It wasn't just because everybody on the ship died. Granted, technically, yes, everyone on the ship died. But, uh, yeah, no, I was, like, led up right to the last possible choice I could have made of either making the right choice and going to the Haven or making the wrong choice and dying. And, you know, I had about a 33% chance of each of them. Or, I don't know, I was so low in everything, there's a chance that none of them would work. So, if you made this far in the video, though, go ahead and leave a like. Comment below how you thought this run went. Yeah, is Megan Man like the intergalactic woman of the year? Subscribe if you're new to the channel, or if you're not new and just haven't subscribed yet, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!